Hello friends, welcome to my video. In this video, I will show you how to design a simple counter in Simulink. So for that, let's start a new Simulink model. The basic template. And then, either you can go to the library browser or you can use the quick insert option. So let's start with quick insert option. So for the counter, the basic thing what we need is that it should always add one. So we need an addition or sum block. So first let, let's add a sum block uh, in our model. So this is a basic sum block. For some reason I prefer rectangular, it, it looks good to me. And less of the things I can leave it fine. I will make it yes. Now <coughs> what we need to add into a counter. So in a counter what we need to add is whatever the output is say for example y at t time should be equal to y at t minus 1 time plus 1. So we have to add 1 so we will have to first add a constant block with a value 1. You can have a counter of your desired value you can add even 2 or 3 if you need but in this simple example I show you how to add 1 to it. And once you have added 1 we have to give this as a feedback. But there is something called algebraic loop. So in this case, when we give a direct feedback uh, of the output to input, this will give an error of algebraic loop. That means that any algebraic operation in Simulink can't be done in the same time cycle. So we must give some kind of delay to it or some kind of uh, uh, break. So we can add a delay block for that. So we, we use this delay block. And by default it comes with minus 2 but we need a delay of just 1 so we enter minus 1. Instead of delay block you could have also used this memory block over here but I will use delay block. I just flip the uh, output and import and quickly insert it here. So now my counter is ready. Yes, it's ready. It's so simple. To check the value of output because this will run but to check the value of output we must add some scope or some kind of output uh, uh, sync yes no okay we must save it so I will save it say for example the model name I will give is uh, counter in simulating of oh, MATLAB yeah. let's simulate uh, there will be lots of uh, issues in this but first let's simulate and see what happens I will try to resolve all of them one by one. So I'm simulating it did complete. Yes. So if you can see my counter is <coughs> increasing the values one by one. But you can see we ran it for 10 seconds and it it went up to 50. The reason for that is it all depends upon the step size because in each step we're increasing it to one. So what if you want to increase the value of one at or at each second, the real second. So, say for example, if you are running this model for 10 seconds, you want to increase it only for 10 times. So for that, we will have to change the solver setting, which we can either go from here directly uh, to this uh, uh, to view the solver solver settings, or we can go from this <coughs> uh, this sim uh, simlink uh, model configuration parameter. I will prefer directly to go from here. I click it and it goes here. So instead of variable step, we will have to use fixed step and we can give it like a discrete no continuous states. And I think that's it. So, so we can give it as a discrete and I think it should work. Otherwise you can also change it to 1 but I think this should work but let's see if it doesn't work we will come back to it. So it, it is still uh, showing that so what we can do is instead of we can give the fixed step size so we can give it we can hard code it over here as a uh, 1 so uh, yes so if you see since we give the step size as 1 so at each 1 second this complete model is run or executed and we we get the step nice and beautiful 
But if you have observed one thing over here, my step is increasing uh, starting from one. The reason being that in the first cycle itself, it comes as a one at the output. So what if you want it to start from zero? How you can do that? There are lots of options. One option is you can either subtract one from here so that all of this comes one level down. Or simply what you can do is you can just delay the input of one to this uh, addition block. So that we can do very quickly is we can add one more uh, delay block. And the initial value of this delay block will be zero. So in the first cycle it will come zero here and zero here so it will be zero and in the second cycle this one will trigger in so this will start from zero so let's simulate it quickly and see if, if we get a desired value and yes it is so it starts from zero then one two three and it goes up to ten in ten, 10 seconds if we change it to twenty it will go up to twenty yes as expected it went up to twenty okay nice so now, in this video, I will also take an opportunity to show you how you can create a reset counter. So what does it mean by reset counter? So say for example, after each a particular number of uh, increase, you want to reset that counter to zero back. So something like this, I have created a, a output like this. So in this image, what I am showing you, that once this counter reaches the value of 5, it comes down back to zero and it again starts counting. So what if you want to design a counter of this kind where it re it resets itself each time it uh, reaches to five or even uh, you can use some kind of external uh, input mechanism to reset it to zero. So how you can do that? So let's quickly design this in our uh, simulink. So I go back to my simulink model. So to reset, what we will have to do is we will have to put a kind of so basically this is my output value this is this signal is my output so this has to go to zero at one particular point of time so that we have to switch this value from a high value to back to zero so for that purpose we will need a switch first of all so we put a switch here and yeah pressure value at what value you want to do the switching so i think we want to do it at value 5 i expand it so as long as my input value so input will be my this output value itself so as long as my input value is greater than zero it's it will be true so when it's greater than zero then it should pass uh, uh sorry when it's greater than five then it should pass zero so we should have a zero value over here yes and otherwise it should pass this signal value what we are already getting it. So I will just bring it down here. Probably I will have to delete this signal. I was expecting it to auto correct, but it didn't happen. I'll probably delete this signal as well. And I'll connect it to this. Yes. No, looks good. Now, what we have to do is, so now this becomes my output. So my scope goes and connects over here. And So this delay will come here. Yes. So basically, we have to compare with this signal whether whenever this signal goes greater than five, then it should be become to it should, it should switch. It should switch to this zero. It, this will become true. This switch case. So it will pass on this zero value. So this zero will come, and in the next cycle, it will again go back to zero. And this signal will also become zero so it will again reset to zero and everything will be fine but over here one, one thing we have to note is we have we are comparing with greater than zero so rather than comparing with greater than zero i think it will be better if we compare it with greater than equal to threshold so sorry it's not zero it's five sorry i, I i'm saying that but yeah it should be greater than equal to five which is our threshold so in this case whenever it's even equal to it should switch to zero and the reason why i have given equal to is because we are using a delay block here so anyway it will be delayed by one cycle let's run and see if it meets our expectation so it ran yes perfect okay yeah so you you can see over here it starts with zero 
goes one, two, three, four, five. Then again resets to zero, and this reset is happening because of the switch block over here. What we have put it again, it goes to five, zero. So this will keep on going. You can just increase this time to fifty, and you can just see this can keep on going. Yes. Now before I end this video, just one thing I would like to tell you. So over here we are resetting. Uh, to zero based on my output from this particular contract itself, but you can also use an import uh, block. Simulating source import, and you can use this import block where from where you can take the in input from an external source to uh, to do this model so that uh, you can have an external reset button. Uh, and whenever you want to reset, you can reset using this external signal or external mechanism. You can even use some kind of workspace variable or some kind of parameter, a mask parameter. There are lots of options. So you can use it to reset this particular counter to zero back again. I hope you like this video uh, and it was useful for you to watch this video. If you have any questions, please do put in comment. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks again. For, uh, thank you for watching this video. Bye.